Researchers at the University of Tennessee are finding that switchgrass, a potential feedstock for cellulosic ethanol, could also have a place as a warm season forage. Gary Bates at the University of Tennessee talked about the need for timely cutting of switchgrass during a presentation at the Mylon No-Till Field Day at Mylon, Tennessee. Notice is that the protein content on this thing starts to drop before you ever have any stems developed. So now think about this. In fescue, the thing that causes the, the quality to drop is stem production. In the case of switchgrass, it drops even before you get any stems made. And as a matter of fact, you can go all the way to the end of the season. If you were, let's just say that you had some magic type of equipment that would remove all the stems and leave you only leaves, you'd still have a relatively low quality crop because the, those plants, the leaves, lay down so much fiber that you lose nutrients in that. So I guess the point that I want to try to, to make on this is that switchgrass, fescue, and even, in fact, I've got some data right here, even on all these other warm season grasses, Bermuda grass, pearl millet, and crabgrass, what you end up seeing is early cut is good, late cut is poor. The thing that I want to make sure you understand is that you, if you take something like switchgrass, any of these warm season grasses, you have less room for air if you're going to use those as a hay crop. Fescue, y'all know how a lot of people cut fescue. You know, man, we may not get to it till on into June or something like that. We cut it and we still, you know, you feed it to beef cows and they do fine on it. You have more room for air with something like fescue or orchard grass than you do these warm season grasses. Switchgrass, if you get delayed on that and you cut it too late, well, you'll have some rough stuff. So if you're going to use it for hay, you've got to really pay attention to, to your cutting, you know, schedule on that.